Okay, I'd like to um, talk to you about the potential difference um, as a path integral. And so um, let me start out by, by um, just commenting that to find the electric field, uh, that was Gauss's law. We use Gauss's law. But to actually measure an electric field, have you ever um, measured an electric field, like the actual quantitative value of an electric field? I don't think you have. Uh, this is an old an old voltmeter and this actually measures potential difference and so potential difference is is um, the much easier to measure especially at the high school level it's much easier to measure um, the potential difference between two points than it is to measure the electric field at a certain point in fact you've never measured the one and you've made several voltage or potential difference measurements um, the red is the voltage that you're actually measuring and it's with respect to the black. So it's always the voltage at A with respect to B. That's your B. So the voltage at A with respect to B. And, and this device will tell you what it is. It will actually measure it. But mathematically how that works out is if you want to know the voltage at A with respect to B, that's written like this. The voltage at A with respect to B, uh, that's going to be equal to the voltage or the potential at A minus the potential at B. But we can represent that as a path integral. Um, well, before I represent it as a path integral, let me show you if this is a point charge then, if we have a point charge Q, and here is A, that's let's say that this distance is a and then this distance is b okay to find the voltage at a distance a with respect to distance b that would just be the voltage at a minus the voltage at b so the voltage at a with respect to b is going to be k let's call this q1 so it's going to be KQ1 all over A minus KQ1 all over B. Okay. But I want to show you that um, we can get that done with a path integral too. By the way, this equation, you can't use that equation for everything. You can only use this equation for a point charge. So this is only for a point charge only for a point charge. What I'm about to show you works for any type of distribution of charge. Okay, so if you think that you understand this way so you don't have to worry about this other way, this other way is much more powerful and you will have to use it. So let's take a look. If I have, um, well first of all let me tell you that the path integral to find the voltage at A with respect to B, you're going to um, integrate from um, A, you start at A and you work your way to B and you're going to do E dot dr. Now this isn't the E at A and it's not the E at B. It's the E at every point between A and B. So this E, this electric field, is the E at every point between A and B. That's why we need a path integral. So if you can imagine if we have our point charge Q1 here, and here is A, and here is B, then we are going to go from A to B, that's what that's saying, move from A to B, with all these little DRs, there's an infinite amount of them, and at every point along the way the E is different, and then we're just going to add them up. And so uh, if you're wondering why we spent all that time getting the electric field when it was the potential that was so practical to measure, uh, well, it, the electric field is directly related to the potential. So we use this. This is a very useful quantity, but to calculate this mathematically, we need to know that electric field. And so we get this from Gauss's law. And this electric field, that's not at any particular place is at every single spot on the way from A to B. So here goes. I'll calculate that now. I'm going to integrate from A to B. 
And the electric field is, um, if we got that from Gauss's law, or maybe from other means, it'd be kq1 over r squared dot dr. And so if we um, calculate that, then it's going to be, um, we can pull the k and the q out. And so it'd be kq1, and that's r to the negative 2, which always turns into that value when you take the antiderivative of it. And that's going to be from a to b. Okay, um, you know, if you want to get rid of a negative sign in an integral, you can either pull it out or you can flip-flop these. I won't show you the proof of that. Your math teacher will. But if you flip-flop these, that also gets rid of that negative. And so it's going to be k q1. And then um, I put that in first and get rid of the negative. So it's 1 over a minus 1 over b. Hey, that's just like what we got before. That's the same thing as this. So we found that two different ways. Okay, but um, that's for a point charge. What if we don't have a point charge? What if we have, say, um, a uniform field in between two plates? So let me put, uh, let's make two plates here. These are plates. These aren't lines. These are actually plates of charge. I'm trying. I'm not going to draw them three dimensionally, but let's say this is positively charged, and this is negatively charged. And um, here's the field. The field looks like this. Notice that it doesn't. The lines aren't getting further apart or closer together. So we say that's an electric. That the electric field is uniform. And I'm going to just tell you that it's e, it's e. All right. How about e? Uh, I don't want to say not, huh? Let's just call it E. Okay, that's the electric field, and it's uniform. Now, if I want to find the voltage at A with respect to B, the voltage at A with respect to B, that's what I'd like to find. That's just going to be the path integral of E dot dr from A to B. So I'm going to go from A, and I'm going to just do a bunch of path integrals, or a bunch of DRs. Path. I'm going to do the little voltages that you lose as you go from A to B. Okay, so um, the first thing I can do is I can see that the E and the DR are in the same direction. So I'm going to pull out the E. Or, no, I'm going to get rid of the dot product first. And that's because... E is parallel to DR. Okay, next, um, because E is uniform, I can pull that out of the integral be, because it's not changing as you move at any location. And so that's just going to be E. And when you sum up all these DRs, let's say that this distance is um, a distance D lowercase d. So that's just going to turn into d then when you add up all the drs. So the voltage across parallel plates is ed. That's kind of a big equation when we get to a few the next unit. So this is the voltage or the potential difference between parallel plates. In fact, it's such a simple equation that you're going to try and use this equation for any voltage, and, and you'll probably be wrong when you apply it if you apply it to pretty much any other situation. But, uh, but for parallel plates, the voltage is equal to E times D. Now, we didn't need the integral for that one, but if it is changing, if the electric field is changing, then we need to use an integral. Okay, so... Um, I think I'll put one more video on on this potential difference as, as a path integral topic. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.